Infectious bursal disease, or IBD, exists worldwide at massive cost to the poultry industry. It produces a variety of pathogenic effects, ranging from high mortality to immunosuppression. The disease is caused by the IBD virus. The main site of IBDV replication is the bursa of Fabricius, a critical primary lymphoid organ in birds that contains lymphoid follicles where B lymphocytes progenitors multiply and mature. Each B cell progenitor has an immunoglobin receptor on its surface. The gene coding for this immunoglobin undergoes gene conversion, a genetic process that creates millions of different B cell receptors to recognize a wide variety of antigens. The antibody repertoire expands to form a mature repertoire at around five to seven weeks of age when the bursa is fully mature. Post-hatch, the B cells migrate from the bursa to the periphery, including the spleen and other secondary lymphoid tissues, where they will play a crucial role in the humoral immune response. The bird's full immunocompetence relies on the bursa to generate many highly diversified B lymphocytes. Chicks hatch with high levels of IBDV maternal antibodies that decline as the chicken grows. The IBD virus enters the intestinal tract and then blood vessels. IBDV maternal antibodies protect the chicks from IBDV infection. Until the level falls below the protective threshold allowing the virus to reach and infect the bursa. It then penetrates the B cell progenitors and starts to replicate, destroying the infected cells. Virus replication and severe inflammatory response may cause clinical signs up to mortality. It will definitively lead to B cell depletion, bursal atrophy, and decreased B cell diversity and quantity in the periphery that will cause immunosuppression. First-generation IBD vaccines are administered via drinking water on the farm. There are many reasons for vaccine failures, including not respecting the cold chain, time of vaccination, duration of vaccine take, and water quality. IBD vaccines have to be administered when the level of maternal antibodies allows their replication which is below the protective threshold and higher for the Intermediate Plus than for the Intermediate IBD vaccine. If the timing is right, the virus goes directly to the bursa, where it replicates before inducing an immune response. There is a period of vulnerability to virulent IBD, at which the IBD antibody titer is below the protective level. This is called the immunity gap, which is shorter for the Intermediate Plus vaccine. Bursal damage due to vaccine virus replication reduces the quantity and diversity of bursal B cells in the secondary lymphoid organs, leading to immunosuppression. It will be less severe with intermediate than it is with intermediate plus vaccines. The immune complex is the second generation IBD vaccine, comprising a live intermediate plus vaccine strain bound to antibodies. The main advantage of this vaccine is its administration at the hatchery, either in ovo or subcutaneously. After injection, the immune complex remains bound to the surface of follicular dendritic cells in lymphoid organs. Once the level of maternal antibodies reaches the level at which the intermediate plus vaccine strain is not neutralized, the virus starts to replicate in the bursa and induce an antibody response there is still an immunity gap and the bursal damage will induce immunosuppression. For safety reasons, the immune complex vaccine cannot be used in pullets. 
new biotechnologies were needed to develop the third generation of IBD vaccines. A vector vaccine based on the HVT virus, widely used to prevent Marek's disease. The gene coding for the VP2 protein of the IBD virus was transferred into the HVT genome to generate the Vaxitech HVT plus IBD vector vaccine. Vaxitech is also administered at the hatchery, either in ovo or subcutaneously. The HVT vector infects and replicates in the host cells. During replication, the IBDV VP2 protein is produced in the cytoplasm of infected cells. The IBD maternal antibodies have no effect on HVT replication and on VP2 expression. Viral replication releases the VP2 protein. The B cells, whose immunoglobin receptors recognize the VP2 are activated, they multiply and change into plasmocytes, which secrete new IBD protective antibodies, progressively replacing the maternal antibodies with no immunity gap. The overall level of antibodies will never fall below the protection threshold, thus preventing the field IBD virus from attacking the bursa, whether it is a classic, variant or very virulent virus. The bursa remains intact, maximizing the diversity and quantity of B cells throughout the body. The bird's immune system offers an optimal response to external antigens. In conclusion, Vaxitec vector technology not only allows hatchery administration against two major immunosuppressive diseases, it also solves the efficacy problem by preventing an immunity gap and comprehensively protecting the integrity of the bursa against all IBDV types in broilers and pullets alike. This means that Vaxitec vaccinated birds have their entire B cell repertoire to respond positively to other vaccines and the many pathogenic agents present in the poultry house, optimizing production performances.